Hi, I'm your host, Joe Fagan, and welcome to this edition of Discover West Orange. This monthly program, sponsored by the Downtown West Orange Alliance, is dedicated to raising awareness and preserving our rich local history. Practically every West Orange resident is aware of the Thomas Edison National Historic Park on Main Street. His former laboratory is a museum run by the National Park Service, as well as his former home, Glenmont, in Llewellyn Park. In total, both these museums are visited by an estimated 5,000 people per month who travel to West Orange for this specific purpose. Although the museum is a popular destination, surprisingly, if you ask West Orange residents, most will confess they have never been there before. Not because there is a lack of interest, because it's just human nature to take for granted something so close. Many feel they can go there any time, but unfortunately just never get around to it. But I would urge anyone who has never been there before to make time and take advantage of this local historic treasure right in our own backyard. Hopefully someday West Orange will have its own museum devoted solely just to our own town history to complement Edison's story. In the absence of a town museum, perhaps the next best thing is hidden right in plain view on Main Street and just down the road from the Edison Museum. The West Orange Town Hall, which opened in 1937, is full of many historic town artifacts right on public display. On today's program, I will venture into Town Hall, where I will be joined by West Orange Council President Jerry Garino to discuss some of the items in Council Chambers. Jerry also shared with me some of his thoughts about the Downtown District as the Council Liaison to the Downtown West Orange Alliance. We will also visit two downtown businesses who recently opened with ribbon-cutting ceremonies attended by Mayor Parisi. I also spoke with Paul Zito, Executive Director of the West Orange Community House, as they undertake a project breathing new life into an old building on Main Street. So stay tuned as we venture along the roads of home as we discover West Orange. I'm here at West Orange Town Hall inside Council Chambers with Council President Jerry Garino. Jerry, welcome to the show. Now, you are the uh, Council Liaison to the Downtown West Orange Alliance, and uh, I've been working uh, with you uh, for the last year or so. Uh, Jerry, what do you see as some of the strengths of the downtown area? First of all, Joe, thank you for having me on your show, and welcome to Council Chambers. The many strengths that we have in the downtown corridor, of course, one is the West Orange Downtown Alliance, which is on tremendous strides in bringing together the business community and working together as a team with norm numerous uh, activities and uh, processes that are going on in the downtown uh, to bring the business community together, to share their strengths and weaknesses. Also, the development of the PRISM Edison Loft uh, project. The construction should be starting soon, and the Edison Lofts will act as another basis to bring strength and vitality and people to the downtown West Orange community and to the Main Street Corridor. Um, some weaknesses that we have is that people throughout West Orange need to come down to Main Street to see what's available in the Main Street Corridor. They can buy things here that they can't buy anything else. They can get detailed information on how to fix their houses at Schneider Hardware where they really can't get in the big box retailers. So those are the areas that are really the pluses and minuses of the Main Street Corridor. And I myself as the liaison to the West Orange Downtown Alliance will do everything I can as a councilman, as a council president, to give them every benefit they need to be successful. And I believe we're going in the right direction. Well, I certainly can personally attest, Jerry, to all the uh, hard work and, and the commitment that you have 
uh, with the ongoing efforts of the Downtown West Orange Alliance. Uh, like anything, there are challenges that, uh, that we face, and you mentioned PRISM is one of them, and I agree, no question about it, once the project gets moving, it will be a, a benefit to the downtown area. Uh, what is your, uh, what do you see as your future vision for, for downtown? I see it as a vibrant community, a place where people from all over West Orange can come down to eat at the many restaurants there, to come and meet the other members of the community, to see what West Orange is really all about. Not just the two separate towns, but one community, one West Orange. We're unique in our fact that we have four different downtowns. We have Northville Avenue, we have Pleasant Valley Way, we have St. Cloud, and we have the Main Street Corridor with its four distincts. St. Mark's has one, Lord's is another, uh, Tory Corner. It, it, it's the whole pulling it together as one community. That's what I envision the success for what art we're doing in the Downtown Alliance. Well, on our TV show, Discover West Orange, I, I also share, share in that, in, in that the, uh, the community is one community, and, and although the show is sponsored by the Downtown West Orange Alliance, it is our intention to uh, help bridge the gap that exists between the different and distinct neighborhoods. Uh, we share one history, we are one community, and uh, all, all towns, uh, all parts of the town of West Orange are, are equally important. Uh, but we, we need to make people aware of what's available uh, downtown. You know, Joe, in talking about the Downtown Alliance, it's a tremendous group of very talented people, starting with Megan Brill, our executive director, starting with a very dedicated board, members of the community and the business community who really see a value in the downtown corridor. And people like yourself who are educating the people of West Orange and also people from all over New Jersey who watch your show. I'm getting tremendous positive feedback from members of the community who take the train with me on a daily basis. They're very happy to see that the township and the Downtown Alliance are taking a positive approach to what can be done in the downtown corridor instead of a negative approach. You know, you always have to be optimistic about what the results will be. And many of my fellow commuters have said they are really grateful that the township is moving forward with the downtown development, that the township is taking a vested interest in the Main Street corridor, that it is part of West Orange. There's a history in the Main Street corridor, not only the Edison National Park, but a lot of the buildings that are in West Orange that have a distinct historical value to the area, and people should get to know it, that they're living in a community, and especially thanks to your show, Joe, are showing people in the West Orange community and outside the West Orange community of the valued history that West Orange has an impact on not only the national but international world stage. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for your kind words and your ongoing support, and uh, please keep up the good work, and thank you for joining us on uh, Discover West Orange today. Thank you so much, Joe. As we preside over council meetings, we of course are seated here facing the public, but looking across council chambers, we can see staring back at us the portraits of two distinguished looking gentlemen from the back of the room. Their names are Simone Rollinson and Frank O'Connor. Since these are no longer familiar names to town residents, I have asked Joe Fagan, our town historian, to give us some perspective on who both Rollinson and O'Connor were and how they may have impacted our town history. Let's now go on location to Joe Fagan to see what he can tell us. Joe, where are you? Jerry, both those portraits of Rollinson and O'Connor in the rear of council chambers date to 1937, when the current town hall first opened. They were placed there because collectively the two men have a long record of public service to West Orange with a combined total of a remarkable 80 years. Simone Rollinson first became a West Orange councilman in 1901 and was appointed a town attorney in 1904 and served in that capacity for 14 years. He later served as mayor of West Orange for three separate terms from 1922 to 1933. But the Rollinson story really begins here. Before the present day office building at 100 Northfield Avenue located behind me, there was an old house that stood at the foot of the mountain and was appropriately named Mountain Foot. It was built by Caleb Harrison in 1808 and was the first brick mansion built in West Orange and was an outstanding masterpiece of colonial style architect. The ownership of the Caleb Harrison house was eventually passed on to Simone Rollinson through marriage and it became known as the Rollinson House around 1900. Subdivisions of the Rollinson property began around 1907, and by 1940, when Simone Rollinson had passed away, most of the building lots of the subdivision had been sold. By 1946, the two sharp turns around the house became a problem for the ever-increasing traffic flow on Northfield Avenue. 
1953, Northfield Avenue was realigned and the road passed through the former Rollinson Garden. It bypassed two sharp turns around Mountain Foot, creating a safer and faster route. It then made Old Northfield Road, where I am standing, just a small side street connecting with Winningham Place. Joe, that's very interesting to think that Rollinson's house, Mountain Foot, sat at that familiar West Orange location. Do we know what year that it was torn down? Yes, Jerry, thanks for asking. I neglected to mention that. Finally, in 1969, Mountain Foot had outlived its usefulness. The property was sold to a group of investors, and the former Rollinson house was raised on the site, which is the current day office building here at 100 Northfield Avenue. Today, on what may seem to be just an obscure side street, once sat one of West Orange's oldest landmarks for more than 160 years. While Joe is changing locations, let me take this opportunity to explain a little bit about our official seal, which overlooks council chambers. Many people often mistake these objects in the center. These objects might not be obvious to our society today, but they represent plowshares. They were essential to the many farms that once dotted the West Orange landscape when our town was still considered rural. You will also notice a date, 1900, on the official seal. Although the formation of West Orange dates to 1863, the form of government changed in 1900, the same year the town was incorporated. Now let's go back to Joe Fagan on location to find out more about Frank O'Connor. Jerry, Frank O'Connor was born in New York City in 1867 and first came to West Orange when he was only 11 years old and spent the rest of his life living in West Orange. Frank O'Connor, like Rollinson, also served the town for 40 years in various roles as town commissioner, tax collector, and even the head of the Department of Public Works. As early as the 1920s, Frank O'Connor had spearheaded an unsuccessful effort to change the name of West Orange to Fairmount. He attempted to gain support once again in 1936 to change the name of West Orange, but once again his efforts failed to gain any real public support. Frank O'Connor had felt that the name of West Orange never gave the town any real separation from neighboring Orange and East Orange. In 1951, at age 84, Frank O'Connor was changing the storm windows on the second floor of his home at 100 Main Street and fell off the roof. He survived the fall, but eventually died from his injuries a short time later. In 1974, this park was constructed and named to honor the memory of Frank O'Connor. It, of course, is known as O'Connor Park, but I can tell you that when I graduated Mountain High School in 1975, we all referred to this park simply as the new park. In fact, even 40 years later, when reminiscing about old times with some of my high school friends, we still call this the new park. Joe, despite being a longtime West Orange public servant, do you know what Mr. O'Connor's occupation was? Yes, Jerry, Frank O'Connor was a plumbing contractor by trade but also engaged in acting on stage as a hobby. At one time, he was considered one of the foremost actors of the Oranges and had made appearances in over 100 stage productions. Reporting from Council Chambers at West Orange Town Hall for Discover West Orange, once again, I am Council President Jerry Garino and Council Liaison to the Downtown West Orange Alliance. I hope to see you at a future council meeting so you can see and experience for yourself much of West Orange history right here in this historic building, which still bears witness to our storied past. Hi, I'm Megan Brill, Executive Director of the Downtown West Orange Alliance. We will return to this episode of Discover West Orange with Joe Fagan in a moment. Our town is full of rich history and proud traditions as West Orange continues to be a community where families have lived for generations. I would like to remind everyone that many of the goods and services you purchased outside of our community are available downtown. Small and mid-sized businesses ranging from restaurants to retail with a variety of professional services, including legal and medical, can be found in the Main Street Corridor. Four municipal parking lots on street parking provide quick access to most downtown businesses. Variety, convenience, and friendly smiles are all components making the West Orange community the place to visit and keep coming back. I strongly urge all residents to visit and shop downtown and catch the energy. We're here at 285 Main Street at the studio by London Eye for the grand opening. My name 
here's Savion Carson. And I'm Shakai Carson. And welcome to the studio by London Eye, 285 Main Street, West Orange, New Jersey. <laughs> I'd like to introduce the owners, Kessa and Scott Carson. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now tell us a little bit about your business. Well, we are a photography studio. Um, we'll be doing family portraits. Um, we also have uh, showcases and um, just try to bring the community into different services. So we'll have a variety of things that we're going to be offering the community here. Now, you are a brand new business, unlike other businesses on Main Street, which have relocated from other places. So this is your first venture into the business world? Yes, it is. Now, uh, Kessa and Scott, who, who's really the boss here? I'm always the boss. <laughs> All right, you know what? I think we have some authorities in the crowd here. Who are you two young men? Savion Carson and nope. Chicago Carson. Okay, now, uh, who, who, who yells louder, mom or dad? <laughs> Okay, we don't need to answer that. We don't need to answer that. No, on, on behalf of the Downtown West Orange Alliance, I'd like to welcome you to the West Orange community, and uh, I would encourage people to come down to Main Street here and uh, in, engage in your services. Uh, you don't have any objection people stopping and asking questions? Absolutely not. We welcome everyone in here. Now, do you also cover weddings? Yes, we do. We can do any type of um, outdoor activity, um, parties, weddings, anything, we're there. Now, is it just still photography, or do you do uh, videos also? Just still photography. Okay, well, once again, welcome to West Orange Community, and all the best in, in, in business. Thank you very yes. much. I'm here at 96 Washington Street with Jasmine and Melissa. Melissa, tell us a little bit about what your business is and the business name. Well, we're the Love Healing Life Center, and we offer meditation, workshops, energy healing, and card readings, as well as many other different kinds of events. Hey, Jasmine, what exactly is